everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. I realized that I finished this dress a while ago, I think it was about a month and a half ago at this point, and you got to see it in the background of videos, you got to see a video about me making this hat, but I never actually talked to you about the making of this dress. And I'm pretty sure I promised you at some point that I would do that in a future video. So this is that video. This dress was uh, inspired by the paintings of Tissot. I really, really love his artwork. Everything is so light and beautiful and dreamy. And in many of his pieces, he has light blue dresses or <laughs> as uh, a lot of people agree, a light blue dress that appears in the, many of his pieces. And it's just so light and gauzy and gorgeous. So I was inspired by that, but I am not a fan, or at least not a big fan, of the natural form bustle era. So instead of doing a natural form dress like is seen in most of Tissot's paintings, I decided I would take the idea of that pretty pleated light blue dress and make it early bustle, early 1870s, because that's my favorite bustle era. And on top of that, I also did not have any gauzy sort of wall or anything like that in my stash. But what I had was 12 yards of Supima cotton, which is the shiny sateen cotton from Joanne's. It turned out that 12 yards was not enough, but I'll get there later. So I decided to earmark those 12 yards of the Supima cotton for a Tissot inspired bustle dress, early bustle dress, which is what this turned out to be. Um, so I just kind of wanted to take you through how I made the dress. I don't actually have film footage from making of this dress because as I've mentioned in previous videos, I just don't have a great setup for that and especially did not have a great setup for that about a month and a half, two months ago. So I have some still images that I'm going to intersperse in here and I've got some uh, close up images and videos that I'm going to show you of the finished dress as I talk and describe my process of how I made this dress. I do have a handy dandy note card to help me if I forget anything that I wanted to mention. So I started this dress in the middle of February and I was making this dress to be worn at the Victorian Festival in Port Townsend that was supposed to be held the second to last weekend of March, my birthday weekend, March, I think 20th through 22nd was the, those were the dates of the festival. Um, so I started making this around February 12th-ish, I believe. And what I did first was I started on the bodice. Uh, at the time, I was in a show where I was not being used a whole lot. And so I wanted to try and give myself hand sewing to do when I was backstage. So I actually started this at the same time that I was still working on that velvet white and burgundy dress um, that I have talked about in previous videos and have shown you in previous videos. Um, so anyway, I started this dress working on the bodice and as I mentioned, the blue fabric is Supima cotton from Joann's. I actually super lucked out with this cotton because I got it last year. They were having some sort of a sale where they forgot to exclude coupons. So the Supima cotton was already marked down and then there was an additional coupon on top of that. So um, I think this is supposed to be normally $14 a yard. And I got it for four something a yard. So it was a steal. That's why I got 12 yards of this. Plus I got uh, additional yardage of a few other colors. But the biggest chunk was this blue. So the bodice is flat lined with cotton twill. I really like using cotton twill inside my bodices. I feel like it gives them some structure, but it doesn't give too much heft or weight. Um, I think it's just a nice sturdy fabric that this Supima cotton, for example, is really pretty fine and very lightweight, not sheer like a fall, but still very fine and light. And so I really wanted to give it some body by flat lining the bodice with the cotton twill. I just use white cotton twill, 100% cotton, 
from Joann's for that. The sleeves, on the other hand, that would be too much heft. So the sleeves are flat lined with other Supima cotton, uh, just a white Supima cotton in this case. And that tends to be what I do for really all of my bodices is twill in the bodice and a Supima cotton or sateen in the sleeves. So the bottom of the bodice is faced with more of the Supima and that's because the tails on the bodice could flip up just a little bit and I want there to be more of the blue in case they do flip up. So it's a piece of facing that's cut on the bias but it still isn't quite curved or curvy enough to really fit itself exactly around the very exact curving of the back of the bodice. And so I have actually pleated that into shape as I went around the back. I used my go-to bodice pattern for this. I've mentioned this pattern before, both in my Q&As and I think also while talking about the burgundy dress, because it's actually the same pattern that I use for pretty much all of my Victorians. I drafted this pattern in a class that I took that was offered by the Fifth Avenue Theater back in 2016. And since then, I have used it for almost every single Victorian bodice, if not every single Victorian bodice. I really use it a ton. It's such a useful pattern. And all I have to do from pattern to pattern or from project to project is to change the shapes of the hem and the neckline and the flare or, or how the tail is in the back. So in this case, I decided to make it a pleated tail with flare. So I do have little pleats in there so I get that really nice sort of flare. So the neckline is just bound with regular bias tape, pre-made bias tape from Joann's, uh, light blue. The bodice closes up the front with fabric covered buttons. They're just the covered button kits from Joann's, 5 8 inch, and then I cover them with the matching fabric. The top, however, is actually closed with two hooks and eyes, small hooks and eyes, because it's on top of the trim. Uh, I didn't want buttons to have to mess with getting in the middle of the trim or showing up on top of the trim or having to do a buttonhole over trim, which is just a nightmare. So, uh, so this actually closes with hooks and eyes at the top. The trim on the bodice uh, at around the neckline, it is spaced box pleats made out of the Supima cotton. I've just hemmed the edges of the strip of Supima cotton. And then on top of the box pleats, there is a ruched strip of netting. Now this was a soft netting that was left over actually from my giant turquoise ball gown that I made back in 2016? No, back in 2017. Um, and it came from Joann's. It's from the Casa section. It's not the netting like that scratchy petticoat netting. It's actually a very, very soft netting. I don't know if they still have it, but if they do, snap it up because I highly recommend it. It really gives the look of a lot of those antique nettings that you see on extant garments. So I really appreciate this, even though it is probably still nylon or polyester. On top of that, I have velvet ribbon, just the narrow blue velvet ribbon from Amazon, which I will link down below. And uh, I have been apparently trimming everything with velvet ribbon lately, but I love it because it's so easy to sew on with machine. Uh, a lot of times if you're using a satin ribbon and you try to sew it on with a machine, you're gonna get a lot of puckers all over the place. Velvet ribbon really hides that. You can stitch right along the edge. And so I really appreciate putting that on with the machine. Uh, in fact, all of these trims are sewn on with the machine. And I think the entire dress actually, I mean, other than facings and bindings and stuff like that, is done with machine. The sleeve trimming is similar, but not exactly the same. The sleeve trim, it's a knife pleated ruffle at the bottom, and then it's topped with a vintage cotton lace that I believe I got at the bargain basement of Costume College, and I lucked out in getting, as you can see, copious yardage of this narrow lace, which worked out fantastically for this dress because I was able to use it all over, which was really, really wonderful. And then around the top of that, I have a wider strip of velvet ribbon from that same listing from Amazon. And so I got it in just those two widths so that I could really play with kind of the texture. That's the other thing that I really love about velvet ribbon. It adds so much texture so simply. The skirts consist of an underskirt and an overskirt. The underskirt has two layers of the pleated trim on it 
and the overskirt has one smaller layer. Uh, now the underskirt is mostly based on pattern 18 on page, there's not a page number, from period costume for stage and screen. I have mentioned this book in other videos, but this I think is the number one tool that I would recommend for anyone who is interested in Victorian fashion, Victorian sewing. It is so, so useful, so helpful. Almost all of my skirts come out of this. And before I did have my go-to bodice, my bodices came out of this too. If you know how to read pattern diagrams from books, or if you're ready to start trying to learn how to read it, I highly recommend this book. It really is wonderful. That said, it is out of print right now, so if you can snag a copy, do, if you don't already have it. Because um, it's hard to find and it's pretty spendy on Amazon. I will link it down below anyway, but uh, it is pretty expensive right now. So if you need to borrow it from your local library, go that route. Um, that's what I did until I could afford the book. I think it had come back in print at the time, but it's a really, really amazing resource. Now, my overskirt, on the other hand, is really pretty much entirely based off of the 1870-71 day dress from Janet Arnold. And that, uh, the pure patterns of fashion, that worked really well for my overskirt because it even showed me where to put the points on the tapes, um, since the back is bustled up with tapes, or where to do my pleats on the side. It was really very, very handy. I tend to do a lot of my overskirts just kind of eyeballing it, but being able to use this pattern, or at least fairly heavily based it off this pattern, uh, was really made my life so much simpler. So the skirts are flat lined with cotton organdy, uh, both underskirt and overskirt. I purchased the cotton organdy always from Vogue Fabrics. I think they have really great prices and it gets to you pretty fast. And uh, so that's my go-to resource. That said, I ran out of the uh, organdy while I was making this. And so the underskirt actually is pieced. You can see a little bit of it here. Um, it's pieced all over the, the organdy because I just didn't have enough to get a one large piece like I needed on this. The skirts are trimmed with more of the self pleated supima. Now all of my pleats, they're one layer of fabric. I've just hemmed the edges. They don't have any sort of backing on them. And then uh, the pleats on the overskirt are shorter than the pleats on the uh, underskirt, but both are edged with the same vintage cotton lace. And then the underskirt on top of that has the wide velvet ribbon like on my sleeves, whereas the overskirt has the narrow velvet ribbon like on my neckline. That wasn't entirely intentional, but I didn't have enough of the wide velvet ribbon to do all three tiers plus the sleeves. So I made do with my narrow velvet ribbon. And actually, I really like how it came out. I think it, uh, it gives it a little bit more depth because of those different, uh, different amounts of trim. So as I briefly mentioned towards the beginning, this dress took up way more yardage than I had originally intended. What I wound up doing was I had to go to three different Joann's to get enough yardage for this dress. And I did wind up getting extra that I hope to return if things return back to normal because by the time I knew I didn't need it, I couldn't go to Joann's. Uh, I believe that in total this came out to about 16 yards of fabric going into this dress, uh, 16 yards of the Supima cotton. That does not include the cotton organdy, the cotton twill, the Supima cotton that's inside the sleeves, etc. That is just the exterior blue Supima cotton. Uh, one of the reasons that it was so hard to get this and that I had to go to so many Joann's is that it had been recently discontinued, naturally. It's the steel blue color and uh, luckily it hadn't been discontinued long enough ago that it was impossible to find it. I just had to get it in smaller sections from multiple places. So it worked out all right in the end, but this, uh, this skirt did eat up yardage like crazy. And that's because these pleats, I believe wound up taking up about 18 widths of the fabric just in the pleats. 
I believe the bottom pleats are 9.75 inches wide and these are about five or five and a half inches wide. So as you can imagine, that math adds up fast. And it wasn't until I was cutting out the skirt shapes that I realized, oh shoot, I don't have enough fabric. So that's why I went out and ran out and got all the fabric. Now my pleats, I actually just eyeball my pleats. <laughs> um, I don't have the patience for measuring everything out, but uh, I eyeball all of them and then I press them into place, pin them and then sew over the tops. Um, and I actually surged over the tops of these two because this fabric, this Supima frays like nobody's business. So just to warn you, if you do plan to work with this Supima cotton, it frays like crazy. So you have to finish the edges and quickly or it will fray away from you. Um, and the other thing too, for those of you that use friction pens like I do, friction pens do not come off entirely from Supima cotton. I think I mentioned this in my hat making video, but do be careful because you will wind up with kind of a shadow of the mark left behind. Uh, it does not entirely come off. It's kind of like some silks where it won't entirely come off. I still use it most of the time um, because I do prefer the friction pens to anything else, but just word to the wise. Future Rebecca here. I also wore this on a two mile costumed constitutional around my neighborhood and the turned up hem on the bottom of the dress actually wore through the Supima cotton in some places so that I could see the organdy underneath. I will wind up having to bind over the hem with some sort of tape so that the fraying does not continue. Although it is historically accurate to bind over your hem like this, I have never actually had to do this on any other dress and all have worn fine in the past. So please do be careful if you opt to use this Supima cotton in an area that gets a lot of friction like your hem. So despite the fact that all of my friends seem to think that I sew incredibly fast and I'm always churning things out, I finished this um, over a month after I started it. I finished it just around uh, March 20th or something. Now that said, the last week or so of me working on it, I was feeling kind of depressed and not into it because by that point the Victorian Festival had been cancelled. So everything was getting cancelled. It was kind of the beginnings of everything with coronavirus. Um, and so I was just not feeling it. It was kind of hard to make myself work on it. Um, but I did finish it and I finished it in time for my birthday and wore it on my birthday to make myself feel a little better. So, But here I am again a month and a half later and we're still stuck in the house and all of the events are still canceled and more events are canceled, but at least I have this pretty dress to make myself feel a little bit better. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was kind of just a rough talk through. I do hope that with future projects, I will be able to film more of the making of so that you can really see how everything goes together instead of just hear it. Um, I am expecting some updates to my setup quite soon. I should have, uh, have more and better videos to share with you in the future. But if you did like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more from me, please go ahead and click the subscribe button and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I post a video about once a week, but I do also post over on Instagram at Lady Rebecca Fashions at least once a day where you will see all of my sewing progress updates, finished projects, and also Disney bounds to keep me busy while I'm at home. I will be doing another one of these videos soon with my Governor Ratcliffe 1830s outfit, which you've seen a bit of, but uh, that way I can at least talk you through the making of that one as well. If you do have any questions about the making of this dress or anything else related, please go ahead and drop them in the comments. I do hope you enjoyed this once again, and thank you so much for watching. I will see you again in my next video. Happy sewing!